Hey, I'm Kev Kev, Mr. Come, welcome back to Ride Freeware. Last time we dominated the icons catch on board our naked bike, our favorite bike so far. But now we're heading to the Supermoto All Race. Race to the limit for asphalt purists. The first Supermoto bikes came out at the end of the 90s, readapting the motocross or duo bikes for the time with road tires and stiffer suspension. The engine was changed with a ratio set towards acceleration, where the brake system was recalibrated to suit track riding better. In a nutshell, road beasts with extreme riding styles, although agile and light, they are unpredictable must be mastered by racing at the end of the throttle between a wheelie and a drift. These bikes turned the mark upside down, everyone wanted one, everyone wanted to experience that thrill, the thrill of making their mark on the track one lap at a time. So we're going to try and do that and if we do, we win a 1985 Yamaha ID500 V4 as we've got four supermoto races and a time attack. Event open to supermotos as we're around I will not pronounce that name because I'll butcher it. And we have got to choose our Supermoto bike. So we can choose from the Honda CRF450R. Then we've got the Hasvana FS450, the Kawasaki K KLSM450F, the KTM450SMR, the Suzuki RMZ450. And unfortunately, you can't afford the TM Racing SMX. Supermotard Competizione has, we've got to complete the volume of electric bikes. So, you've got five bikes to choose from. Of course, the first thing we're going to be looking at is maybe top speed and acceleration, which it looks like the best acceleration goes to the KTM and has Farna. And then it's between top speed. Looks like the KTM's got that a bit more. Same with handling and braking power. Exactly the same note on board those bikes. So, so we go with the KTM, 217 performance points as well, way more than the Kawasaki, Suzuki and the Honda. As what livery do we go for? Go for the bright orange and white. I mean, yes, I do actually want this bike. So it is unveiled, our newest bike, the KTM. You see why everyone wants it as well. From 2015. Yes, yes, we do want to make this our main vehicle. Otherwise, we can't enter this championship. There are those who love clean, precise racing with perfect lines and those who prefer skidding instead. If you fall into the second category, you don't fail to consider the 450 SMR. The Austrian Supermoto is powered by a liquid-cooled 449cc four-stroke single-cylinder engine with a single overhead camshaft, which ensures a powerful thrust. The cylinder head is equipped with a single camshaft at the front which actions for ultralight titanium valves enabling it to reach 11,500 RPM. We find chassis is based on the Moddy Benjamin chrome steel central tube frame at, at, at combining longitude and torsional stiffness. And then a bit more going into the suspension, the brakes as well on the second page. As for the first time, here we are. Around the Supermoto track. Looks very different, doesn't it? Now, I have no idea what to do with bike setup here. Do we just stick with what we keep doing? I imagine we want short gears as well. The controls, calibration, just have it extreme. And I get the feeling we're going to be falling off our bike a lot. So I'm looking down for the first time out of bikes. Got underway for a two lapper. Oh, everyone's going to the left now. Let's go down the inside and very wide in the next corner. So where the heck are we going? Served to be in the last. That was terrible riding after the start. But these bikes are a bit weird to ride when you've got a handing model, which is all about straight lines, all about riding perfectly. So now it wants you to drift a bit and it just feels a bit weird. As you can see, uh, braking is not good at all. Kind of the understeering nature of the game just means 
I can't actually ride this bike how it perhaps should be ridden. As you can see, we just tripped you all over the place. Game wasn't made for this, really. It feels like with the understeering nature is no doubt with 2.1 back. Let's see if we can get on top of these bikes, though. As you gained a bit in the first sector. I forgot I had difficulty at ridiculous levels again. I have no idea how to take that section. See, we lost the second there. As I am terrible at this, aren't I? I'm going to turn down the difficulty, no doubt, next race. Now, this is like watching a child to walk, learning to walk, while climbing up a rock face. Like, seriously, this is terrible. Well, at least we didn't fall. That's one, that's one positive scene. No, don't even get anything. That's how poor we were. As yet, no stars for us, as we've got to match 53s. We did a 58 1. Bloody hell. So, our first race never happened, as now we head to the Castellotto circuit. Well, I say Castellotto, it's actually Castelletti circuit, isn't it? So, what can we do with bike setup then? Because that did not work at all. Should we keep it neutral for this race? Just keep all of the settings the same and just see what happens. Because it feels like we can't be aggressive with the setup, unfortunately. But we are definitely turning de the difficulty down back to maybe 90, I think, or 95. Should we try 90? As we go for the second time looking down on our bike. I get a feeling these supermotors are going to take a long time to learn. Just once again, everyone else goes to the left. Let's go to the first corner. God, these corners are so tight. If I could rip the back end round, I could probably get these bite around these corners. Oh, we're doing well here, up to fourth. I admit, this isn't my first time round this track either. We've done this multiplayer. It was my first time around that previous track and I no doubt that showed. Hey, 90 seems to be our level. No, we're gaining up to everyone. Even got the lead. That's how we go into this tricky middle section. Uh, so you get a time period of three tenths. No doubt deserved. Look at this section. It's ridiculous. Especially these tight air pins. We're switching back on each other. Trying to use the banking. That did not work. Trying to overtake for the lead. That did not work. I get a feeling if this was right too, that hand it would work well with this bike. Of course, you can actually slide the bikes then. You can't slide the bikes with this. Unfortunately. And so any in any hope of fun has just disappeared immediately. Now we're getting around this course handily. Actually lead across the line. Miracle is happening. Now as you can see again my weakness is very tight corners. See I always thought it was heights but I think very dark corners is closed. Very tight corners, should I say. Very dark corners as well. They want to switch back into darkness. Never know what's there. Let's say I'll close in up a bit on this second out, but we're good in this sector. Yeah, we've actually got some speed. And in this section, it's just a rhythm section. You've just got to make sure you're in the right rhythm, not running wide. So you go through the switch, but look at that 2.7 up. No, 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 where are you going? You idiot. You deserve to lose the lead for that. 
and get taken down. Right, there goes our chances of winning. It's down the inside. Come on, we can get stars at least. I'm not leaving this championship without getting any stars. God damn it. There's massive dive bump. Yeah, so now we get up to point eight. Penalty wise, so we're going to have to be very aggressive in these last couple of corners. We're going to win. We get second. We'll take that. Should have won the race, but there's an improvement. No, we got those stars. And our fastest lap was actually not the quickest either. Probably deserve a second, but they got just second by just 64,000 of a second. Damn that last corner cut. Uh, so now we've got the time attack event around the... Again, I've pronounced this before totally wrong. As we remember this track, it's the go-kart course. So we are getting ready for all that. So we've got to be a 112.3. Let's see what we can do on three laps. Remember, we give ourselves three laps to do this. And if we fail, we're not allowed to play ride for another year. Just kidding. It's another two minutes. You know, you've got to give yourself punishments if you do poorly, you know? This is not a bad lap, but let's say lines wise pace wise it's probably abysmal uh, it's definitely can be more aggressive there was whoa where are we going well i probably should know where the track goes as well that would be good to learn that's all we're going to this section hello look at this long radius corner oh game you know how to get me excited that's not how you do it, though. Okay, so we just switch back and then take a much longer line. Why can't we race around here previously? It feels like we need to switch circuits between... Was it the 125cc bikes, wasn't it? And this bike. The 125cc bike should have this track. Supermoto should have the other track, which is a bit tighter and tristier. Kind of doesn't make sense, it feels like, going this way around. There's always six tenths up. Told you a rubbish pace wise on that previous lap. And all seven tenths up, and then we mess up that tight section. And we we'll switch back through the left on the power. He's going well. Three point four up. So at least get one star, I think. It'd be close to two stars. I'm not sure if we're quick enough though. You have to get it all the way down to one start. Actually, this is close to the quickest. Oh, just rise. I think it's because we messed up that final corner. So down way too much for the first corner. And for the second, yeah, no, no doubt we're three tenths down. That's better, that's more aggressive. Apparently we lost time though. How does that work out? Oh, there we go. We actually took the hair pin. How you're meant to for the first time. Gain a couple of tenths. And then way too much curb. If we had slightly longer gear in as well. I think we've done this by now because we keep topping out. I 
There you go, aggressive engine braking. Much smoother final corner. This is close, this is very close. Just on it. Nine thousandths of a second, bloody hell. As he smashed through rank 50. As now we're an amateur. Always knew we were. And there are three stars. As now we had, now we got confidence to by. Of course, she send us to Cadwell Park. As here we are at hell. It's not really. I'm just overplaying it slightly, maybe. But Cadwell Park is the destination of failure in this series. Because I am all around it. But we take the lead in the first corner. Oh my god, how short is this circuit going to be? I said, oh my god, we actually took that chicane first time over the little rise as well. You even pop a re on this thing, do we? Has it got a 1.4 second lead? See? This isn't hell. This just, you know, warms you up for it. So you go out the final corner. Again, the British circuits seem to be a bit kinder to us. I'm not sure it's because I've got knowledge of British circuits or... I don't know what it is. Actually, I don't really have knowledge of Cadwell Park. I just know it's an incredibly difficult track. Which is spectacular watch for photographers. Because of that rise as well. I've seen that front really... And you've had some classic BSB races around in the past as well. I can't remember the year, but I remember Chris Walker and I think it was Neil Hodgson taking seven bells out of each other around there. Might have been 2000, 2001. I don't think it was Neil Hodgson either. I remember Chris Walker doing it with someone though. And I do love Chris Walker. Probably until he was like in his 40s. In the British Superbikes. Unfortunately, I don't think Stalker ever got a championship, though. One of those best riders never to win a championship, unfortunately. But again, that's happened to quite a few of my favourite riders as where the heck are you going, bike? I mean, that's why I'm to Noi Haga at World Superbike level, Aaron Slight as well at World Superbike level. Love those riders growing up. That's now we lead by a second. But it doesn't matter, so we're going to cross the line in first. Now we're getting the hang of this. It's just that first circuit being so twisty as hell. Just still get a bearing, and plus we had an abysmal setup. Now we're running with the default setup, not doing any changes. It seems to be riding well, the bike. Oh, plus reload the difficulty a bit, slightly. Uh, so now we're heading to the final supermoto race round the Okayama circuit. Uh, so I've just had a revelation. I think I'm actually talking about Neil Ho Neil McKenzie and Steve Hislop, who were doing that in around 2000. Or 99 or 2000, doing that around Cadwell Park. I remember it's just a very controversial date in the race, because they just... I think the winning move was just a dive bomb into the, either the final chicane or the final hairpin. I'm going to have to research this after the race. Hopefully I can find that race and find that move as well. If someone knows it, let me know down below. But that's my enduring memory of Cadwell Park. Well, my enduring memory of Okiyama is us taking the lead. I think for the first time actually round here. I don't think we achieved it in the other race we did round here. It's, oh, that's a bit wide. That's even wider. That's okay, you're meant to take it wide in the final corner, you know? The Jack Villeneuve at Estriel line, you know? As we cross the line and go on to the second out. Oh my god, we're topping out way too early. Yeah, push us through the corner. As you can see, we're just blocking there. Taking a very tight line. There's all too much curb in the first part. But none of it in the second. So we hold on to the lead. 
Probably should have upped it to 95 for the Supermoto class, so for most of these events. Uh, so for some reason, that right hander, we can accelerate, no one else can. So it's a bit harsh on the AI and our opponents. As you go out the final corner, another victory! As we make that, is that three in a row? Four in a row? No, three in a row, isn't it? Should be four in a row. Yes, yes, give us three stars. So it's a bit tainted, this Super Motocross, because we went down the difficulty quite a bit, but... I think I begrudgingly kind of like the bike. Still, I wish we could slide it more. You know, actually slide the bike. As uh, so that's our visit of the Supermo class over, or should we try and do this first race again to end it? See if we can actually improve on 12. So we are back where we began then on our Supermoto adventure. Let's see who can do well now. We have difficulty lowered. We have a much better setup, hopefully. Try and go down the inside. At least we know we sit we've had a riders round this course. This is unusual. And now we are falling down the order. This is our best section really. It's all force wide. Oh we we're still in eighth. Well, we're magnetically attached to this position at the moment. No, now we're wide. But still not last. In fact, we get back our eighth place. Uh, so I believe we're coming to the final corner now. See, now we've got lofty goals of seventh. That guy does not like it though. Oh, he's wiped us out, the dick! So whatever we do, we come last round here. And it's like... You know, we are gaining like a hell and the riders in front. Man, this is so point and squirt. I hate this circuit, really do. Uh, let's go in the final corner, yeah, we're just gonna come 12 for every attempt. We do a minute point six. Which I think is slower than our fast as that previously. Because I think we did 58, which is decent round here. They do have more powerful bikes as well. Look at that Kawasaki and TM. What the hell? So it's not meant to be then in that first race. I'll go back and get the stars though. But we still do better than we did in the Super Sport 300 though. Because somehow on the Super Motos, I will not understand that ever. But I hope you enjoyed. Another round of me buggering up, basically, for the most part. Did have a good run, though. Especially around Cadwell. Can't believe that. So next time, we're going to do another Heritage Cup in, looks like. I shall crown in the Queen Bike of Clubman Circuits. But I hope you enjoyed another episode of Ride 3. That's probably my least favourite bikes to ride, because as I said, the game handling model just doesn't allow you to ride the bikes. You know, as I feel they describe, and how perhaps you should be quick, but you know, it'd be a bit more fun if you could actually slide them. Let's see what we can do you know, next time around the bike. I think we have to be a bit more linear and actually go around corners properly, but thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.